Today I'm gonna make curry butter chicken on the grill. And I'm gonna show you exactly what tricks apply to make your butter curry chicken extra juicy, tender, and flavorful. Big thanks to Master Build for sponsoring this video. Normally I would now show you how good the meat is that I selected for this, but we got some preparation to do first. I got some delicious fresh ingredients. I got my Scottsburg pan here and I'm going to preheat it. And then I'm gonna quickly show you how to prepare the marinade for the chicken. First thing I wanna do is get my cast iron pan hot, put in a little bit of oil, and a little bit I mean a quarter cup. Then I'm gonna start chopping fine my red onions. I've got eight of these red onions. Now if you do a little bit of preparation, you can do this rather quick. And while the pan is warming up, you're gonna put in the onions. Nowadays you can actually buy pre-cut onions that will make life a little bit easier. While the red onions get a head start and slowly start turning soft, I'm going to do cut up the rest of the ingredients. And the first one is going to be ginger. As you can see, I'm chopping the fresh ingredients in the order that they need to be cooked. The onion needs the longest. Look at that. All fresh ginger. Needs quite a bit of time. Ginger has strong fibers. Onion has strong fibers. Next up are the red peppers. Well, these are red peppers from the supermarket. They're not that hot. That's why I'm putting in three. It is a curry and you can put in one. You can leave them out totally, but we're gonna cook these through and through so you don't have to worry about it being too sharp. Final fresh ingredient is going to be garlic cloves. I got a whole bulb, which is two, six, eight, 10, 11 fresh garlic cloves. And all you need to do is chop it fine a little bit. Slices is good, will work. All right, garlic goes in. To this, I'm going to add 60 grams of hara masala, which is an Indian spice mix. You can see that the spices are soaking up the oil super, super fast. Now I'm going to need a little bit more oil. As you see, it's going to dry. I need those spices to toast a little bit more. So I'm going to add another quarter cup of sunflower oil. You're just looking for the oily consistency where there's just a tiny layer of oil on everything, basically frying all of the ingredients, bringing them together to one big paste. Now I'm going to leave this to fry for about five minutes. I need to, to darken up a little bit, but I also need to cook the spices, the ingredients have that paste like consistency. And while that's happening, I got one more ingredient that I wanna add. I'm gonna add 100 grams of cashew nuts. That's gonna make the marinade rich and creamy. Make sure you keep stirring. You see it's nice and chunky. I'm gonna add this to the pan. Give it the opportunity to toast together with the curry paste. If you were here, if you could just smell this. Time to add two tablespoons of salt. And because of the salt, we're getting an even thicker paste. This is now done. I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna put on the lid, let it cool down for half an hour before we use it on the chicken. While that's happening, we're going to take a look at these beautiful chickens. Nice fatty chickens. And I love fatty chickens because they turn out more juicy, more flavorful than any other chicken. So you can see I've chosen the chicken that has been fat, a little bit of corn, that's why the yellow fat. And that makes for a better fat buildup. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it up a little bit. And like in this case, if you have a big fat blob like that, this big fat blob I'm gonna use, I'm gonna save for later. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with that. My chef's knife out, you see? Chef's knife, like this work. There we go, split it open. And now we've got a beautiful chicken. Press it down. I'm gonna do the same for the other one. Cut along the backbone. Don't try and cut through the backbone, that's too thick. But on the side, it's just, well, there's nothing really there except for some tiny bones. Oh, and don't do this with your expensive Japanese knife. Just get a proper knife, a real chef's knife. And then just press the chicken flat. I'm saving half of the curry paste for later and the other half I'm gonna use as a marinade. And I'm going to add another quarter cup of sunflower oil because you got two types of marinade. You got an acidity-based marinade and you got an oil-based marinade. And this is an oil-based marinade. And what I wanna do is take that curry paste and I wanna go underneath that skin of the chicken. So first I'm gonna wiggle my way underneath the skin and then I'm gonna put some of that curry paste in. You see the curry paste has a hard time penetrating through the skin. It can definitely do it, no problem. However, if you put it underneath, it's just gonna work so much better. Gonna do the same thing for the leg, just go underneath. And all of the rest is just rubbing it in on the outside. Now all of this is going on. And then when you rubbed it in and you got everything nice and seasoned up, all of that paste everywhere. Then it's time to take this, put it in the fridge and come back six hours later. 
If you're making curry and you want, and you have to wait anyway, you might as well make your own naan bread. Now this is one pound, 500 grams of all-purpose flour. Just gonna save a little bit of that, like a tablespoon or so. To that I'm gonna add seven grams of yeast. That's dry active yeast. A little bit of sugar. To that I'm going to add half a cup of water. And if you're not quite sure, and just do it in phases. Start it up. You see, with making a dough, you're always looking for a certain consistency. You don't want it to be dry, you don't want it to be wet. And that's why I like to start with my flour and then just adding the water slowly. So this is about three quarter cup of water that I added now to the dough. And let me show you. Now it looks like this. This is a good, good consistency to have. And of course, to boost the flavors a little bit, a pinch of salt. Now we need to give that machine a little bit of time to knead the dough and stretch the glutens. I'm not a baker, but I hear the bakers say that. I'm more of a mead guy, actually. Who would have guessed, right? But I do like the fact that you can bake this. Well, in the meantime, let me show you. Oh no, we have to wait still. We gotta wait another one and a half hours. So much waiting. The bakers always know best. If you look at the dough now, you see that it's much more like a, like one part, like a beautiful piece. Like, you see, it looks good. It is nice and homogenous. It's not like a flaky dough. It's just one ball of doughiness. And then they let it rest. Not, not really rest. It's like curing, but it's like, um, Rising, that's what it is. They call it rising because it gets bigger. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of sunflower in this bowl because I never trust dough. It always sticks. I'm only gonna need a little bit. And everybody knows when I say a little bit, it's not really a little bit. And then, boom, this goes in. Cover it with some cling film. I'm gonna put it here right next to the fire so it gets nice and warm and fluffy and feel good. And in the meantime, you and me can fire up the master built auto ignite. Well, we don't have to do much, but auto ignite. You don't have to do anything, we just have to push the button. And then slide in the fire starter on the side, turn it on, set the temperature, and then hit ignite. Should have used even more oil. Let's go. Come on. It's shy though. There we go. I'm gonna take the little bit of flour that I have left, cut it into pieces. There's nothing spectacular about making naan and rolling out the dough because all you need to do is just stretch it out a little bit. And when it's flat, you can put it in the grill. And you see, that's how easy it is to make a naan bread. Let me just tear one up and give you a look at this. Look, the fresh bread. It looks absolutely fantastic. I wanted to say something that's not really important, but it's quite tasty. Now when the bread's done, I like to store it in a bit of aluminum foil that traps in the moisture and the heat and makes the naan bread that typical soft naan bread. We're not finished there. I'm gonna take some of this clarified butter and I'm gonna put it in a pan. And when the last naan bread comes out, I'll slide that butter into the oven. In the meantime, I'm gonna chop some garlic. We're gonna need about the same amount of fine chopped parsley as we have garlic. The butter is now warm, so the herbs can go into the butter. <laughs> Straight from the cutting board into the pan. A couple of minutes in the pizza oven. And once we got that beautiful bubbling butter and it's done, it's time to put it on the bread. You know, it's, traditionally it's not a real thing where they do it a lot. It's just something that you can do if you want to. And do we want to? Oh boy. <laughs> I love this the most. Time to hide this and go back to the chicken. Since we're going back to business cooking our chicken, I set up the master built auto ignite with the cast iron grill grate so we can do some combination of roasting and grilling. And therefore I chose a temperature of 180 degrees Celsius. It's slow enough for the chicken to stay juicy and not burn while cooking, but hot enough to get a nice sear on it. Our chicken in the meantime <laughs> absorbed all of the flavors and it's going on without scraping off any of that beautiful, delicious marinade. Look at that, completely brown now. Keep my eye on the temperature. I'm gonna stick in a thermometer and it's as easy as just plugging it in. Then it goes through the magic thermometer hole, comes out inside the grill, and there I can stick it in, preferably the chicken breast. 
And then in the app, I can actually see what's going on. And in the graph, I'm getting now the temperature of the grill and the temperature of the chicken is just starting out. But I do recommend flipping it every now and then and maybe switching side because you got one firebox on this side and that's pushing hot air in that direction. The chicken is almost done. I'm making sure I'm flipping it, turning it around, keeping my eye on this thing, getting it nice, warm and crispy. And since it's almost done, I'm gonna focus on making a curry. I'm gonna use the same pan that I used for the curry paste. Do you remember that piece of chicken fat? We're putting it in a pan and we're rendering it down. If you don't have a piece of chicken fat, don't worry about it. You can use clarified butter to start with. And when the butter starts melting, I'm going to add the curry paste. We're going to turn this into an actual curry. I'm gonna add some coconut milk, a little bit of water. I'm gonna let this simmer and boil down again until we get a nice curry-like consistency. I'm gonna add half a tablespoon of salt. Of course, you can do this to taste. The sauce is done, the chicken is done. Oh, it's time to, oh, if it's cooked all the way through like this, it's so dangerous. While we take a look at the chicken, I'm gonna put my bread back on the barbecue just to warm it up a touch, to have that butter melted nice and warm. Of course, I'm gonna give that chicken 10 minutes of rest. Let's take a look at this delicious chicken. See, we made it nice and juicy. Whoa, it just tears up. I need to help the skin a little bit, but if we shake it too much, it's gonna fall apart. I do like me some good cuts. Wow, it is so freaking juicy. Look at that. That's how juicy this is. <laughs> it's extremely, extremely juicy. We got our sauce that goes on top of this. Look at that. Some fresh cilantro. It's starting to look good. A few crumbles, fresh cashews on the plate, the side. Make it look nice. You know, you wanna impress people. If you're cooking for someone else, they're always looking at it first and they think, wow, this looks good. They're gonna enjoy the meal a lot better. Let me get a slice of naan bread. A couple of slices, put that in the back. And look at that. There we have it, a beautiful plate of butter curry chicken. Now tell me you wouldn't wanna eat that. I love the plate so much. I'm gonna take a picture for the website. So the recipe's on pitmasterx.com. Go check that out. A little bit of chicken, a little bit of butter. That is good. You might want to give this a try. If you love curries, you know you need this. Mm. Mm. I'm going to eat the whole thing. I hope you don't mind. See you in the next video, guys. <laughs>